Hi, my name's Spencer, but I'm more commonly known as Specs, which is my pseudonym online. I interact daily um, with hair loss sufferers and I form the pseudonym Specs because people communicate via aliases online. And uh, I've been doing that for several years and helping a lot of hair loss sufferers um, as Specs. As a young guy, I was really well known for my hair. I had a great head of hair up until the age of about 21 when I started to recede and it really affected my self-confidence and self-esteem. And until you start losing your hair, it's a very difficult concept to kind of comprehend because um, it's, it's a very personal thing that you have to deal with. My name is Joe Tillman and um, online I'm known as Joe Tronic. It's my internet handle. And I've been a patient advocate um, mentor the original hair transplant mentor for 10 years now. I was 17 years old when it was first pointed out to me I was losing my hair. Uh, not a good age for that. And then 22 years old, I had my first of two disastrous procedures with, um, with the first doctor I went to. They're, you know, the whole reason why I do what I do. Um, nine years later, 31 years old, Dr. Wong at Hassan Wong did the first repair surgery on me and that's when Joe Tronic was born. Well, I started having hair transplants at the age of 24, and over the course of five years, I'd had six hair transplants at the cost of over £40,000, um, which all of them had resulted in a poor outcome, very unnatural, leaving me even as isolated, if not more, as I was previously prior to any hair transplants. And it was at that point that I, you know, based on research and based on time spent, that I kind of got to the bottom of it and found um, Dr. Feller to repair my previous surgeries. I had this name online, Jotronic, which was a nickname a buddy of mine had given to me. And um, so people were saying, well, how'd it go? You know, how was your procedure? And instead of talking about it so much, I went ahead and posted the photos. And people were like, wow, this is fantastic, good for you. And then I started sharing the link to the website where I'd uploaded all the photos I'd been taking, and then it just exploded, it snowballed. I started getting emails from Venezuela, from Japan, from Russia, from all over the world. And I remember, I remember this very clearly, I'm looking at this email I'm like, this guy from so-and-so is asking me about my, what, this is, really? <laughs> Before I knew it, people were coming to me and asking for advice and um, looking at me as like a, um, well, an authoritative, authoritative figure, right? When I'd had my repair procedure with Dr. Feller, I was already online, already kind of documenting and sharing information with people. And it was of great comfort to me to still document and interact and pay forward my information that I'd learned via my procedure with Dr. Feller. So it was very important to me because I never had anybody to, and originally to help me and guide me and educate me. And I'd learned a great deal having my procedure with Dr. Feller. And I realized at that point that it was important to, for me to hang around Around on the forums and, and to help other guys get educated and informed and empower them so they didn't make the same mistakes I'd made as that young 24 year old kid. Soon after I started working for the clinic which was about a year and a half almost two years after my first surgery I had a guy come in and he was a Texas state trooper and he got up and he walked over to me and he goes man you're Joe Tronic and he grabbed me in this big bear hug and he squeezed me and he said, thank you. And he started crying. <laughs> and uh, it's just very um, uh, humbling to have people look at me like that, that I can help them. And it's been over 10 years now since I originally discovered Joe Tronic, who is the original patient mentor online. I have a lot to be thankful for Joe. He truly inspired me and I followed his model helping people in the UK. It's a huge honor also to meet with him today and it's something I'm really looking forward to finally after 10 years. Specs, um, he, he came on board with Dr. Feller's office um, about 10 years ago uh, as a patient, and he's obviously a very helpful, helpful uh, patient advocate, a uh, lot of respect for him, and uh, 
it'll be cool to meet him. I, I mean, we've been talking for for years, right? And these, you know, publicly and a couple couple emails back and forth, but uh, it'll be surreal. It'll be uh, it'll be nice. never know it was a hair transplant even from the trained eye. I've always been fascinated to look at yours. <laughs> I have. I have honestly. You categorically are the hair, hair transplant showcase patient because you oh. went Norwood 6 to yeah. ultimately full hair. Have you got any more in the bank then? Have I got, got a little more? bit but I'm, I'm happy. I don't I don't really need any more. Yeah it's nice. I, See the whole the whole point is to camouflage the old work and yeah. Can you see? You'll see the old work. Can you? With my trained eye, I can see a few, but it's it's outstanding work. It really is. And then the the S and P had let me see here and the donor scars. Yeah, that's really nice. One of the benefits slash um, what's well, like a double edged sword of being in the clinic day in and day out is you do see the cases that. Um, are heartbreaking. Yeah. Like the guy from India that came to us, he had uh, a procedure where they were calling it FUE when it was nothing more than plugs. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and they yeah, lowered yeah. his hairline down to here with about 75 grafts between this point and this point. And so... Just and so, so inappropriate. Just this, it was like a picket fence, yeah. you know, three three rows just down. Just above his eyebrows. giant, like 12, 15 hair grafts just sticking mm. straight out. He, I mean, it was just the most heartbreaking thing. And it took three surgeries, but we finally got him to where he looks normal. And completely relate, and that's why we decided, I suppose, because we've been there mm -hmm. and we've done it, and we've had that not relatively that poor procedure that has to make no alternative other than to live under a hat. Right. That you know to turn it round, mm -hmm. it can be done, and how it can be done, Absolutely. and you want to make sure that you can. And it is, it's, it is, and that's why I, you know, previously was speaking why I kind of hung around because mm -hmm. I could have just. You know, gone and just continued off with my property like business. A lot of guys and, do. And yeah, yeah, exactly, like a lot of guys do. But I felt compelled in some respects to continue to share the information and exchange mm. the information and protect people from making the same mistakes that, that we'd made. Of course. And uh, I think we've proved every which way till Sunday that we genuinely are honorable patient advocates, you know, well, which is rare in the industry. Yeah, of course. And the hair, hair field is pocked with. You know potholes and, and and pits and canyons that you can fall into indeed it's and, very confusing isn't it yeah for, for absolutely many. it's a minefield so obviously i'm a great opportunity to be asked to go on spencer's show i've personally never met him before no we've spoken on the phone many times over the years yeah yeah no, no, i know you're regular on the show it's just I've, I've never met him yeah i'm looking forward to it Hey guys, welcome to The Ball of Truth. Phone number 888-659-3727. I'm Spencer Coburn. I am the uh, founder of the American Hair Loss Association. I'm also the founder of the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons. And I got into this field uh, about 14 years ago because I was a young hair loss sufferer. I'm also the host of The Ball of Truth radio show. Um, started as a local program in New York that was nationally syndicated for uh, about 12 and a half years uh, throughout the country and now we are internationally syndicated online so you know two-thirds of guys by the age of 35 across the globe are dealing with hair loss 40 percent of hair loss sufferers are women so it's it's a silent epidemic of biblical proportions you know i'm pretty excited tonight because we're going to have two guests who are really like online hair loss heroes um, Joe Tronic and Specs, uh, Joe Tillman and Spencer Stevenson, who I think have really carried the torch in their own way. You know, I started in a more mainstream way. You know, I was published by major publishers and I got on the radio. These guys just went on in very grassroots fashion, got themselves online and, you know, told their story. And in my view, it's just as powerful as what I do. And it's, it's pretty unique to have them on the air. Ladies, hey, how are you, man? <laughs> Good, man. How good are to you? finally meet good you. Give me a hug, you. man. Hug. Yeah. How are you? Oh, finally. Yeah, wow, good looking good, good, man. Hey, what's up, my man? Great how to meet you, buddy. Really good. Yeah, finally. All right, come on in. 
But I am uh, pretty excited tonight because we have some incredibly, uh, at least well-known in the hair loss world, guests uh, here in studio. Let me introduce uh, some real major hair loss veterans. It's kind of like we're crossing the, uh, the streams here. It's really <laughs> weird. I have uh, Joe Tillman from Hassan and Wong, and of course, Spencer Stevenson, Specs, the famous Specs, who is a, uh, a well-known online figure and uh, a rep for uh, Dr. Alan Feller and Dr. Lindsay. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for hanging out. 888 We're going to go to the phones. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Um, and I came across this blog, and there was, just, there was this guy on there who was saying that, well, <coughs> in the UK and some parts of Europe, they're far more comfortable in their own skin because they said that the women there are more accepting. Oh. Of uh, I think we accept a lot of things, uh, yeah, uh, but I, I, I think you can dismiss that statistic wherever you found it. I, I, the fact of the matter is, I don't think it matters where you come from. My, um, my, my observation, uh, if I can interject, Vic, you know, I deal with a lot of UK patients as well, and um, the one thing I've learned is that the, uh, the patients from the UK and, and society in the UK in general, they, they don't like to seem vain. And so they don't talk about it nearly as much, so they're always putting on a brave face. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's very, it's almost taboo. I think Joe's hit the nail on the head there with regards to British people as a, as a society. We Stiff like to up keep, a lip and all that. Yeah, I think that's it. I think you've yeah. nailed it. Uh, I want to thank uh, Joe Tillman and Spencer Stevenson, uh, Specs and Joe Tronic from the online world for joining us tonight. It's a treat for me as well. Thank you for inviting us and having us here. Uh, it's been a great pleasure hanging out with you guys. And guys, until next time, be strong, God bless, and thank you so much for hanging out.